Welcome to The Real Estate Show with your real estate and mortgaging team, Terry Kalakos and Marav Marciano on CJAD 800. And a happy Sunday afternoon, everyone. You're listening to The Real Estate Show. I'm your host, Terry Kalakos, chartered real estate and mortgage broker, as well as president and founder of Northeast Real Estate and Mortgage Agency. And today we're going to be talking about dealing with environmental issues in your home. Um, we had a text actually last week that came in. It was actually one of our clients who had a question about radon, which the municipality is uh, uh, making uh, doing tests in their neighborhood, which kind of sparked for us to get a whole bunch of questions uh, and emails during the week about what radon is, what to do with certain things, how to deal with asbestos, how to deal with uh, pyrite, all these things. So we figured, why not? Let's do a show about it. Uh, if people are curious, we're going to talk about it. Um, so that's exactly what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about radon. We're going to be talking about mold. We're going to be talking about asbestos and pyrite. Uh, you know, all this stuff can show up in the house and we want to know how to deal with it. Uh, should you be concerned? Maybe, maybe not. It all depends on, you know, uh, what uh, the outcome is going to be. Uh, joining me, we have my co-host, Marav Marciano, chartered real estate and mortgage broker and vice president of Northeast and all around beautiful woman. Marav, welcome. <laughs> I have Thank to say you. that. Thank you so much. I must have said something last week to you because we actually had a caller who called the uh, who called the uh, the office this week to book an appointment, and uh, he says, "Is Terry still married after last week's show?" I don't even recall. Did we say something? <laughs> I don't know. I must <laughs> I must have said something <laughs> silly, like I usually say. But anyways, okay. Uh, feel free to call in with your questions to five one four seven nine zero zero eight hundred, or you could text into five one four eight hundred. And don't forget to write your name uh, in the text so we can give you proper credit and. Uh, uh, if you have a chance, you can also go on Facebook Live uh, and uh, watch us uh, live uh, at Northeast Mortgages. Uh, Facebook Live, sorry, facebook.com slash Northeast Mortgages. Uh, and please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done so, which is newsonthego.ca. Before we kick off the show, there's a couple of really important developments that uh, we've seen uh, throughout the week. Uh, the big one, and this is something, you know, I hate being that guy that, you know, that says I told you so, that says I told you so. <laughs> but, you know, a, a few weeks ago, I put out a blog post and we talked about it last week and yep. all our customers got it. And a lot of the customers actually reacted to it uh, positively and they, they took action right away, which I was very impressed. And some people came back, including some Facebook groups saying, oh, this is fake news. This is uh, this is not true. This is this. This is that. And the blog post was specifically, okay, that mortgage rates are at an all-time low, but more and more economists are echo echoing the same predictions that I actually put out a few weeks ago, talking about bond yields, right? And talking about how uh, there is a very strong possibility that rates are going to be going up because the cost of borrowing for the banks is going to be going up. So this is not to be confused with the overnight rate. And again, if you guys haven't had a chance to listen to last week's show, you guys can actually go to our Spotify or uh, our iTunes playlist or even on YouTube and you can actually hear last week's show. Uh, but it is uh, something that's going to potentially happen over the next little while. Actually, it's not potentially. It will happen over the next month or so. We are going to see the fixed rates increase. So, and it's going to be gradual. I don't yeah. think, uh, I think where people got a bit flustered is uh, they assumed that you were mentioning that it was going to jump from one day to yeah. the next. It is gradually going to go back up to pre COVID amounts. Maybe I shouldn't have put a rocket, a picture yeah. of a rocket ship on the. <laughs> <laughs> Should have put, put a, a turtle, yeah. turtle climbing up. A... <laughs> I put a, uh, I put a picture of a, uh, of a rocket uh, taking off a SpaceX <laughs> rocket. Anyways, um, the other thing, the federal government uh, plans to bring in more than 1.2 million immigrants over the next three years. Uh, this will help re the rental market and the real estate market as a whole. Uh, I don't know if you want to uh, kind of touch on that a little bit, Marav. 
Well, uh, they basically increased their usual target by about 50,000 a year. Right. And they did that to make up for this year, which they was... Exactly. There was yeah. a lot of, um, of halting uh, of all immigration in any way. Um, but their aim is about 400,000 a year. Some of them will be in the economic class. Um, obviously, there there's always the ones in the um, uh, refugee status. There's some in the family class. And there's those with uh, humanitarian or uh, compassionate grounds. So, uh, but the majority of what they're aiming for is 232,000 immigrants in the economic class uh, that they want to bring in in the next year. Um, and then 103,500 in the family class, 59,500 in the refugee and protected person class, and 5,500 in the human humanitarian, humanitarian. and uh, compassionate grounds uh, yeah. Yeah, so all of these things, I mean, we're going to see there's a need uh, for housing. Yeah. So we're going to see an increase, obviously, in uh, the need for the rentals. Plus, the students are going to slowly start to come back as of next year, which now all of a sudden, a lot of these vacant apartments uh, that were empty, basically, are now all of a sudden going to start getting filled. Uh, so we might actually be seeing an increase in rental uh, values and an increase in demand in real estate for in 2021 2022 yep so um we have a text uh, from robert uh is it, was there anything else that you wanted to add before because this is a, actually a really i saw it as it came in and it's actually a really important text yeah um is there anything else no, that you want with to respect add? to market update okay so should we be concerned about paying over asking when buying a home what are the dangers that's a text from robert um okay this is this is what's happening right now in this market. Everyone is paying over asking. There's just not enough inventory. Uh, the danger is, is that when you're buying a property and you're paying over asking, is that the value of that property is not actually going to be supported. And if I look at a few uh, clients that we've actually had, e even in the last little while, in the last month or so, uh, they put an offer on a property, you know, $100,000 over asking. We send it to Bank A. Bank A comes back and says, no, the value is four hundred. dollars goes to bank B, bank B says, no, the value is 50,000 over asking. And then finally, bank C accepted the value that, you know, so the, the clients were paying. So it all comes down to bank appraisals or like, yeah. what would you say? So uh, in a case like that, with these specific clients, they had a couple of options. And one of the options was to go back to the vendors and negotiate the price lower. The vendors said no, because there was another person that was in line. They really wanted the house. So the if the value was to remain low, they would have had to insure the property. Uh, and they were putting 20% down, so it, they would have just put CMHC insurance on it and they would have you know, been able because to buy it. Because now their down payment represents a, a smaller, smaller amount. percentage. Exactly. Uh, but the real danger is what happens to the value of that property over time. And this is important because if you're planning on buying a property like that, that you're paying over asking for, and you want to flip it, maybe this is not the best market to do that. However, if this is a long time home, you're going to stay there five, 10 years, even in the next couple of years, if there's a market correction, and the home prices drop a little bit, you're still going to be okay because you're planning to stay in that property. You're not planning on moving over the next. So if you're buying of... this year to sell next year, maybe not such a good idea. Exactly. And the other concern is, and you know, maybe we'll we'll talk about it right after traffic. Is, um, you know, should I wait, you know, for there to be a market correction? And that's a question that comes up very often. And the answer is not as clear cut as people think. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're spending money on rent, maybe it would be a good idea to buy now as opposed to buying later. Uh, if you're living at home with mom and dad and you're not spending anything monthly, well, then maybe you can wait. Uh, you're listening to The Real Estate Show. Now we're going to take a small detour over to the CJD Traffic Center with Jill Fitzgerald. You're listening to The Real Estate Show. And today we're talking about environmental issues in your home. Feel free to call in with uh, your questions to 514-790-0800. Or you could text in to 
uh, and, and please put your name so that you can uh, share your experience with us. Yeah. Uh, m my wife is laughing at me <laughs> with the way I stumble on my words. No, no, no. <laughs> so last week we had um, a caller and, and a client who called in uh, mentioning that he had radon in his home. He yeah. wanted to know potentially, what he, potentially, potentially, because they haven't done the test yet. What he should do, yeah. what are some of the actions that he should do. Of course, uh, one of our, our realtors, who's his realtor, uh, got in touch with him. They went through all the different options that they had so what is what is radon exactly terry where does it come from okay so you're the engineer yeah. <laughs> for those of you that don't know marav is actually an engineer uh, electrical and computer not it's civil okay or, uh... go for it <laughs> Well, I'm going to leave it up to the experts. Wow. Okay. <laughs> um, so radon is a radioactive gas. Okay. Um, sounds sounds delicious. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, and it's radon is everywhere in Canada. So this is what we need to know. It's it's in the ground everywhere. Um, it's a byproduct of um, uranium. Yes, uranium. Exactly. Yeah. I was trying to remember. Yeah. And basically, it's all about the levels of radon the acceptable levels. So according to um, to Government of Canada, they say as long as it's under 200 becquerels per cubic meter. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a measure of radiation per second. That's okay. what it is. So as long as it's under that type of radiation, that amount of radiation per second, uh, so 200 becquerels per meter cube, then you're okay. But anything above that is considered dangerous. And it's actually quite dangerous uh, if you live in a home that where you have exposed uh, you have been exposed to radon for many many years it is believe it or not the number one cause of lung cancer outside of smoking for non-smokers it is the number one cause of lung cancer so it is actually quite dangerous if you have what was the statistic that uh, we were we actually read it together and so if a smoker uh, the chances of them developing lung cancer is one in 10, right? Yep. So if you're a smoker and you have radon gas exposure in your home, then you're looking at one in three. One in three. That's yeah. that's insane. Yeah. That's crazy. So basically a non-smoker exposed, again, we're talking about a very long exposure. Of we're course. talking about yes. years and yes. years. Uh, a non-smoker exposed to radon for many, many years has a 1 in 20 chance of getting lung cancer. A smoker not exposed to radon has a 1 in 10 chance of getting lung cancer. And a smoker exposed to radon, it's 1 in 3 chances. So, And this is straight from um, the Government of Canada's website, from Health Canada. Um, definitely, I'm not making these numbers up. Uh, yeah. It was actually something that we had to do a lot of research for. It's uh, when we help our clients, we go all in. And um, I have to say, we... Uh, we, we learned quite a bit. We learned about radon when we did our courses and all that. But I mean, this yeah. was like an in-depth um, analysis. and uh, Right. So um, so now what's, I mean, first and foremost, uh, one of the first things that I did is I, I went on Amazon and I was actually looking to see if there's radon detectors. And there's all kinds of little yep. test kits, you know, for those they of you do, that are they, concerned. They have them. Yeah. So there's, there's test kits that you can use at home uh, to determine whether or not you have radon levels uh, in your home. You can also buy a radon monitor, uh, which is kind of like a smoke detector, mm -hmm. uh, which actually measures the amount, uh, the amount of radon that's in your home. Uh, so let's say you discover, oh my God, I actually have radon gas that's you know seeping up. How does it get into the home? So normally radon uh, is created in the ground. Right. It's a byproduct and it just escapes through through the air right so then that's so not as dangerous. it goes through uh, around your foundations and out 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 but so if it you have any kind of cracks in your foundations any kind of uh, joints that are not properly closed any right. kind of uh, pipes that have exposure anything that has exposure to the outside a drain that's mm -hmm. not properly sealed this is where it seeps in from got it and then uh, in order to remediate that it's like a two to four thousand dollar remediation and basically what they do is they drill, they put pipes into your, um, through your foundation floor mm -hmm. with vents going out of your foundation or out of your house mm -hmm. uh, in order to get rid of this uh, gas that's being formed under your house. So so as long as the gas is vented out of the house, then the, ra uh, the radon levels will remain low in the home, which obviously at that point, it doesn't cause any dangers. Exactly. Right? But we do have to remember that 
according to Health Canada, every single home in Canada has small traces of radon in it. Right. So it all comes down to what's the level. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, we had um, we had something similar on you know our, our property on St. Joseph. That the house was built in 1892, um, and they had done tests in the area. Uh, they to for radon and it turned out you know everyone's kind of levels were very acceptable and it wasn't it, it really wasn't the end of the world uh, but nonetheless what we ended up doing uh, because we were concerned uh, at that time we went and we actually uh, solidified if you will the foundations the crawl spaces uh, they all got like this special plastic sheathing that basically seals the ground so there's no moisture or air that's actually seeping up from the ground soil um, as well just made sure that there was adequate ventilation had you know there's little those little windows that were on our property on st joseph if you remember yep. those were always open uh just making sure that the air was constantly flowing and there was nothing uh, that was coming it's in it's all about ventilation that's right if you want to yeah. avoid radon it's all about proper ventilation very interesting yeah. very interesting yeah um let's let's switch gears a little bit which is something that's probably a little bit more concerning and probably causes more health issues uh let's talk a little bit about mold mm -hmm. okay so uh, mold is it discovered often during home inspections is it visible you're asking me yeah absolutely <laughs> i mean like do you do you like Look, you, you you're it's... the one that handles more on the real estate side Look, at right? the so... end of the day if if it's visible the inspector will find it if it's behind the walls or under the floor Mm -hmm. um, no, he won't discover it. And people get upset. Oh, why didn't the inspector know that there was mold under my floor? He can't pull up the the pieces of wood to see what's under your floor. So if there's water damage that was never declared mm -hmm. in the seller's declaration and there's mold that was created under the ground, uh, under the floor, there's nothing really that the inspector can do. But anything visible, he will definitely point it out. And um, they'll spot the, the, the water marks. They'll spot the spores on the walls um, so definitely an inspector will detect the visible ones mm -hmm. for the non-visible ones um, that's another issue sometimes we discover it when we do renovations yeah and I have a very very funny story to talk about in a second uh, before that um, we have a text from Gary just a warning to potential buyers of luxury homes uh, example, Westmount, many of these homes are loaded with defects, pyrite, illegal plumbing, and major foundation issues. People are bidding, uh, are in bidding wars, are buying these homes. I'm in renovations of business. Uh, I'm, a, I'm in the renovation business, and I see this very often. Absolutely. You have to remember these homes, Some, in some cases, they're over 100 years yeah. old. And there's going to be things that come up. Yeah, and there was different regulations back oh, then. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like lead paint was okay. <laughs> As a child, maybe this is where my brain damage comes from, but I used to, you know, chip paint off the walls and I would play with it. And occasionally it would go in my mouth. So maybe... That explains a lot. Yeah. When we come back, we're going to be looking at pyrite and asbestos and how they are actually affect... Uh, they could potentially affect your mortgage approval. You're listening to The Real Estate Show on CJD 800. The Real Estate Show is brought to you by Northeast Real Estate and Mortgage Agency. You're listening to The Real Estate Show. I'm your host, Terry Klakos, and today we're talking about environmental issues uh, that you can face when you buy a home uh, or when you discover them, when you're fixing them up. You can call in with your questions to 514-790-0800 or you could text in to 514-800. Uh, and don't forget to write your name in the text just so that we can give proper kudos to the person that the text belongs to. Uh, we have a text here. Uh, you should always get your radon test kits from the Canadian Lung Association website, not Amazon. The Canadian Lung is more reliable. Very true. Obviously, the Canadian Lung Association has, but if you want something quick or if you want like an actual meter that is constantly. That has like an alarm. Yeah, exactly. We that have has something an alarm. like that uh, for carbon monoxide. Exactly. Right? Yeah. It's like a carbon. Mon yeah. That's what they sell on uh, Amazon. I don't think you can actually get like a, a test kit that's, you know, mm -hmm. like one of those one time use things. Um, I would want to do both yeah. personally. Yeah. So. And then we jumped into mold. Yeah. Um, <laughs> would inspectors <laughs> discover right. it or not? And uh, also mold has some health issues, more... Ton of health. And it's. I would say it's more uh, uh, 
common, if you will, that you're going to get the health issues through the mold than you would be mm -hmm. with something else. And you don't even realize it's from yeah. the mold because it's like almost like asthma type of exactly. issues, whether it's wheezing, whether it's stuffy nose, itchy eyes. Uh, you know, itchy skin. So it's things that you don't even realize are due to mold living in your home. You can also, you know, a lot of people have heard the ex uh, the expression, uh, a sick house, right? Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, uh, what, ends, what ends up happening is these homes that, you know, you buy and they end up having mold that's sitting in the walls without you, it's not visible to you. And all the spores tend to kind of leak out into the house. And when they're leaking out into the house, what ends up happening, it starts to create asthma. It starts to create all these autoimmune issues, you know. And there was a study, and I'm, I'm, I, I'm not going to, you know, please, um, you know, don't, don't take my what I'm saying right now to heart. But I had read a study one time that talked about the how graves disease which is an autoimmune disease mm -hmm. and mold exposure in a home are very linked together you know and what other diseases are linked to mold exactly i mean in, there there's, must a, be, there's a ton uh, so how do we remedy it yeah. right so mold is obviously something i mean you know mold has been around for millennia before us and it's going to be around for millennia after us yep. um, it's all around us um, you could test for it you get an air quality test that's done in your house when they do the air quality test, what they're going to do is they're going to actually measure the levels of spores, if you will, inside your house and the level of mold outside of your house. And depending on which one is higher, well, then, you know, over a certain amount, there's an issue. And then it's a matter of finding it. Now, mold will form anywhere, obviously, where there is moisture. Exactly. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's a it's a fungus. Yeah. So you're going to end up getting it uh, in very common places. So you'll get it in the basement. You'll get it in areas like that. You'll get it in bathrooms, laundry rooms, laundry rooms. Yeah. Exactly. If there's a little drip, I mean, it could literally be, you know, your washing machine is dripping a tiny little amount and it'll form mold, yeah. you know, uh, but some of the less common p stuff that people don't realize the caulking, and we've talked about the importance of this time and time again, the caulking around your windows, mm -hmm. right? So when you have a, a home and the caulking has been eroded around the windows, you know, you've had those windows in place for a long time. Besides the fact, obviously, that your house is not efficient and you're losing air and you're losing heat through them, what ends up happening is water gets in mm -hmm. and the water will get in and it'll seep into the walls and it'll start to form mold in there. And now it's in, let's say it's in a bedroom, you're breathing this mold and it obviously causes a lot of health concerns like we've talked about. We have another text, how do we remove the mold? Well, it's it's a very extensive job. It I also mean, depends where it is. Exactly. If it's something that's on a wall, yeah, it's much easier than under a floor exactly so i've seen you know uh mold removals that were very simple it was a very quick fix you know the uh, issue which caused the mold um was removed and it was addressed um and then you know the the affected area was cleaned with uh, special products okay tsp which is tetrasulfate Right, it's not Terry like... special product. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a that's a that's a inside joke. We used to uh, I used to clean things with a with this concoction that I had made, and I had actually written on it Terry special product. And then we ended up going into a Home Depot one day, and we see TSP. But anyways, so you could use TSP. You could use all kinds of interesting little things like that to remove kind of basic stuff. But stuff that's more uh, in you know more serious, you actually need to get a professional to come in to actually remedy mm -hmm. this, uh, the problem. And when you're selling your home, you obviously need to declare this. Yeah. Right? It's a problem for yeah. a bank financing. Like you can't get financing if there's mold in the house. It has to have been remedied, yeah. right? Because a bank will always look at a, a, a transaction. They're gonna look at the file. Uh, and they're gonna say, are we taking a risk? If mm -hmm. the client defaults in paying this mortgage, are we going to have an issue selling this property? And if the answer is yes, whether it's because of mold, whether it's because of radon, whether it's because the house was a grow up, mm -hmm. now you have an issue, which that is one of the things that causes mold in homes is 
the grow ups. Yeah, because of the moisture of the plants, the spores coming off the plants. Exactly. And it becomes a big, big mold infested home. Exactly. And although there is plants that CMHC has, which allows you to buy X grow ups, again, the, po the property has to have been rem uh, rem remediated. Right. Yeah. Um, don't laugh at me. No, I, I'm, no, I'm not laughing. And I have, have to it's do. The, it's all the lead paint that I had <laughs> as a kid. But um, it's, you know, the, the property has to be uh, remediated and they have to do air quality tests and they have mm -hmm. to have a certificate that basically says that the property is healthy again. And then the banks will actually uh, finance it with the backing of CMHC. Okay. Interesting. But yeah. um, a lot of people don't realize that the amount of times that I get calls from uh, individuals and they say I'm buying this house it used to be a grow up uh, I'm going to gut the whole thing and I'm going to fix it and I'm going to sell it for more great if you have the cash and you want to buy it knock yourself out but the minute you get a bank involved now all of a sudden they want to make sure that yeah they want you to follow their rules yeah exactly exactly I know Absolutely. you wanted to touch on Pyrite too where uh, I know we're going to be continuing after uh, um, traffic after traffic but Pyrite mm-hmm what is it? So uh, pyrite is a big thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something that's very common in Montreal. It's an expanding rock. Okay. Basically, it's it's rock that when it's exposed to moisture and air, it'll actually start to expand. And the problem is, is that a lot of builders used to use uh, backfill that had pyrite in it. Mm -hmm. So the backfill is what you put in the not in the foundations, but... But under the cement slab. Exactly. Yeah. So um, what ends up happening is you end up getting moisture in there, the moisture expands, and all of a sudden it starts to create cracks. Uh, we're going to look at that in the next... Uh, right after traffic. So now we're off to the CJAD Traffic Center with Jill Fitzgerald. You're listening to The Real Estate Show with your real estate and mortgaging team, Terry Kalakos and Marav Marciano on CJAD 800. Thanks for tuning in. Today's discussion is about environmental issues you can find in your home. You're listening to The Real Estate Show on CJAD 800. We have a text here. Uh, what specific parts of the city seem to have higher radon issues? Well, uh, we kind of talked a little bit about it. It's it's everywhere. I mean, it's literally throughout all of Canada. Uh, Canada does have a lot of uranium. Uh, we, it is one of our natural resources, oddly enough. And because of that, it's in the ground. And unfortunately, we end up getting it uh, in the house. So ventilating is the way to fix it. You can actually go into your municipality's websites uh, individually and see if there's concerns for radon. Uh, the municipalities will actually talk about it as well. Uh, there's another uh, text from Gary, uh, who I think was the uh, contractor. Yes, it is. It's the same phone number. Once again, I neglected to mention that asbestos tests uh, that are negative are rare. Asbestos was used extensively in Jip Rockland plaster in the 80s. Gary, Absolutely. Gary's 100 yeah. percent correct. Uh, you you know, Montreal has a lot of old homes and these homes have asbestos in them. Mm -hmm. It is unavoidable. You know, the 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 the, the plaster, it's not even the, the jib rock. I mean, I mean, jib rock had it in there also, these these asbestos fibers. Uh, but the plaster that was used had asbestos in it. The uh, insulating tiles had asbestos in them. Yeah, it was just it was it was everywhere. Uh, but before we that is one of the things that we're going to be talking about. But I do want to continue our discussion about pyrite yeah. and how to remedy uh, the situation with pyrite. So can you spot pyrite yourself? Yeah. So pyrite has a lot of tells. OK, so when you go into your garage, let's say you're buying a, uh, a home and you walk into the garage and you look down on the slab and you see uh, it's a very specific type of crack that occurs in the slab. It almost looks like a spider web. Mm -hmm. um, chances are there's pyrite in the backfill. Uh, if you see it inside the home, uh, so basically when you're um, in the basement downstairs uh, uh, and it's a spider web kind of looking crack where it's got a center point and it's like cracked outwards, almost look like a bomb fell in the center and it kind of cracked the... It's it's does pyrite. it lift? It does it yes. lift a little bit sometimes? Absolutely, it's going to lift the slab, and that's what ends up causing the the, the cracking. And, and sorry, no, no, please. No, no, I wanted to ask you with respect to acceptable amounts. 
I know so, the, you know the ranges. Yeah, so there is, uh, depending on the banks, uh, and now we're talking specifically about financing, right? So depending on the banks, they have different ways of looking at it. So uh, the between zero, obviously, to I would say about eight, ten parts per million of, of pyrite, pyrite uh, or inflation. It's not even parts per mil million. It's it's the inflation index that's used. Okay. Um, then at that point, there's no problem. They'll they'll finance it. It's all good. If the inflation index starts to get higher and you're anywhere between 10 to about 18, then they will do it with the backing of CMHC. Mm -hmm. So you'll, you're going to end up finding the bank basically saying, well, no problem, we'll finance the property, but we need to be backed by CMHC. And anything above that, they won't finance it at all. Hmm. So it's important that the issues are addressed. Now, if you do want to get a property financed and it's got pyrite, then the way to do it, it would be something along the lines of a purchase plus improvements. So you would actually have to submit a quote and the quote would have to be to remove the slab that's in the garage or in the basement and actually go in and remove all the backfill. So all the backfill that actually has the pyrite in it, verify the foundations and then put in new backfill fill that's non gonflable that's not inflatable non gonflable yeah <laughs> <laughs> hope that uh, hope that helps uh hey terry great show thank you for all your help and all your great team uh michelle will be helping us this week mike awesome perfect, perfect. i think that was related to the radon that's right exactly so now back to the asbestos yeah your uh, your texter brought up the asbestos yeah so what is it exactly? You mentioned it's fibers. Yeah. So as best material. So asbestos. I mean, we we live in Quebec. As uh, I mean, asbestos was all over the world. But again, asbestos was one of the natural resources of Quebec. Uh, it's used for everything. I mean, they used to use it in brake pads. They used to use it for insulation. Uh, you have uh, vermiculite. Uh, which is a type of insulation which actually contains asbestos fibers in it. And there's two different types of vermiculite. There's the one that's got asbestos and the one that doesn't. Mm -hmm. And if you have vermiculite with asbestos in it, the bank won't finance you. They're going to want it remedied. They want to want it that removed. Um, so it's it ha has these little fibers. And mm -hmm. the problem is these little fibers, again, they get inside your lungs and they increases the chances, increase the chances of lung cancer. Yeah, and it creates uh, dry coughs, shortness of breath, loss of appetite, weight loss, etc. Exactly, exactly. Uh, not fun. Yeah, so uh, when the government realized that there was an issue, they started to ban the use of asbestos in construction materials. Now, when we're talking about vermiculite, a lot of people get freaked out by it, uh, but it's it's kind of a fill that you put in the attic and in insulation. It, typically, if it's left alone and it's not disturbed, it's not going to cause any issues. But the problem is you start walking around on it, you start stirring things up. Now, all of a sudden, you've got all this asbestos little fibers floating around your house, and that's going to cause issues. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing is, you know, we started talking about asbestos tiles earlier. Yep. Um, even our home on St. Joseph, I mean, the house was built in 1892, and we had uh, a wood burning, or the original cast iron, actually it wasn't wood burning, it was a coal furnace that was in the house, and that's what would, would heat the home with hot water. And above it, there was asbestos tiles because it's a fire retardant, hmm. right? And those, you know, when we discovered that it was asbestos tiles, we had to remove it. So they're they're around, they're there. Um, it's very, very important that if you do discover asbestos, that you r remedy the situation with a professional. It can't be something that you just kind of willy-nilly say, you know what, I have a pyrite... Uh, uh, not pyrite, excuse me, I have kind of asbestos in my attic. I'm going to go in and I'm going to remove it myself. It's got to be disposed of properly because if it's not, again, you're going to be filling your home with And we also have to remember uh, that the inspectors are not always the ones to blame. People are quick to blame the inspectors. It could be the home builder. It could be the land you're on. It could be um, all kinds of, it could be your own doing. Yep. Not, you know, so definitely... Uh, to do the proper research before starting any kind of lawsuits and things like that. Yeah. Go after the right people if there is anybody to go after. Exactly. Absolutely. Marav, we've run out of real estate. Yes. Uh, if people want to get a hold of us. You can reach us at the office at 514-680-4674 or online at www.nord.com. 
E-S-T dot C-A. <laughs> I was going to say you're swearing again. Yeah. And take a moment to subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is newsonthego.ca. Till next week, everyone. Have a blessed week. Love you all.